Good to see all of you. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Okay, so uh, we've been learning about the uh, measurement of the sukkah, that it needs to be minimally 10 hand breaths. And um, the Gemara came up with a, uh, uh, tried to come up with a way of calculating that uh, based on um, based on the fact that the base on Migdash was, uh, that had Kruvim there that were on the ground and those Kruvim were up to a third of the base on Migdash. So the same thing would be for the Mishkan, that the uh, there was a schach, the meaning the, um, the the wings of the Kruvim were mesachet, they you know, sort of like, uh, were like a tenth above uh, ten hand breaths. Uh, so ultimately you see that uh, ten hand breaths of hollow uh, area is considered schach. And the Gemara said that that doesn't fit according to all opinions. So um, uh, it fits with Reb Meir, but doesn't fit with Reb Yehuda. So the Gemara said, you know what? It's a halacha lo meishu misinai. It's a law from meishu and halacha meishu misinai. And then we started started talking about uh, the other uh, statements there about the halacha lo meishu misinai that shiurim are halacha lo meishu misinai measurements. And the Gemara says, is it really halacha lo meishu misinai? But we have a pasuk that talks about all different halachas, and it really uh, took areas all over uh, all. You know, uh, areas of halacha um, all over uh, Shas and Kudshim and Taharis, I should say, um, the Inyanim of Tuma and the Inyanim of Kazayas and uh, Isar Achila. And uh, it said, Eretz Fitus Aira, Gavana Sein of Rima. And you have all the cases of all the cases that uh, the, all the uh, species that Eretz Yisrael is blessed with. And each one teaches us a certain law regarding halacha. Um, Chita had to do with uh, entering a house that has the uh, Tsaras. And if you're wearing clothing and the clothing only becomes tame, it has something to do with the loaf, of, uh, half a loaf of a wheat bread. And then you have uh, soira, was a, a barley corn, that that's the size of etzem. And uh, each thing had its uh, shear that it was teaching us. Anyway, so we're in the middle of that. Then we even spoke about uh, a vessel that's tame uh, can, um, can become tahar if it's no longer usable as a vessel. And uh, that would be the size of a of a pomegranate. We said if it has a hole, the size. And this is specifically talking about a a, a a regular household owner rather than a store. A store is not going to sell a, a broken vessel that has a hole in it, even a smaller hole. But a yeah. regular person keeps them, or at least in the olden days, you know, they would reuse things, and they weren't as uh, they didn't consider the world as disposable as we look at it today. And therefore, the um, uh, the Gemara talks about the, a hole in a vessel. Uh, as long as it's not as big as a uh, pomegranate, you could use it for pomegranate. So you could use it for other big, uh, you know, big things because the pomegranate won't fall through. So anyway, the, the Gemara then said, Devash. I think that's where uh, we got up to. Is that where we're going up to? I believe so. Okay. So we're up to the word Devash. And the word Devash is... Rabbi. Uh, Rabbi. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, what, what, it seems like if there's a disagreement between two rabbis, if one rabbi wants to win the argument, all he has to say is, oh, this is halacha of emotional misenai, and therefore you have to listen to my side of the uh, argument because it's halacha of emotional misenai. So like, uh, how does a person, you know what I'm saying? It's like, how does a person, how, how, do, you, how do you deal with that? Yeah, well, it's like uh, um, it's like how do you play chess with a, a guy who just like when he's about to lose, he just like flips the table, throws 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 the board off the table. Uh, um, no, but uh, you don't really find that much. I, I'm not really sure the Gemara. It's not like um, uh, it, it's not like the, the the rabbi himself said, "Oh, it's halacha meisimusina." The Gemara tells us that as a um, understanding of how that rabbi under uh, how that rabbi learns this and seemingly there there's a there is halakha lmaishmi sinai about this in other words there's a halakha lmaishmi sinai that mechitzen are learned from halakha lmaishmi sinai the only thing is maybe you'll say that it doesn't apply to the law of the 10 hand breath. You know what I mean? So we know there's a law about them. there's machitz and that are halachal Moshe Sinai. There's, there's, there's something that, that, that Hashem gave Moshe at Sinai. We don't know exactly what it is uh, regarding those laws. Was it the, the law of good asik? Was it the law of lovud? You know, we've learned some of these uh, rules. 
It could also be the law of the minimal size of a sukkah is 10, uh, 10 hand breaths. But we don't know which laws are included in that halacha ma'ishu misina. So according to the opinion of Reb Meir, we don't need to say that it's a halacha ma'ishu misina, that uh, this minimum law, because we have a way of learning it from the uh, uh, from the kruvim, from the wings of the kruvim, that they uh, they were like a tent over over this uh, hollow area and of 10 hand breaths. So for Reb Meir, we don't need this. But for Reb Yehuda, we need to learn it from that we, we, we have to assume that he that, that when 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 uh, when he learned the uh, what's included in the Halakha Lamashim Sinai, he included this law as well. Because we, otherwise we have no other way of, of figuring it out. So it's not like they're having a debate and one rabbi just pulls up the Halakha Lamashim Sinai card and says, you can't get me wrong now. It's the Gemara is understanding that that's the, uh, you know, that's the, uh, that's the way, that's the, under, that's, that's the understanding. Okay, so um, let's see. So we're up to Dvash, I believe. Right. We did Remine, and we did all the Shiurim, or Rav Shiurim, Akazesim. Now, what did it mean the majority of the Shiurim of the measurements are the size of an olive? Like this, the the uh, the general laws are always the size of an olive. Uh, yeah. Eating tray, feeding um uh uh hela uh, fats that are uh, that are non kosher yes, uh, cool. oh, let me mute let me mute everyone over here mm. okay um so then it said that the uh, what what are the size oh. okay so uh so what what did it mean majority are olive the rules of olives it's like eating uh, uh, the 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 non kosher fats, the, the the blood, pigol, nicer, uh, nicer. The, the, this has to do with carbonic sacrifices that are pigol. They were brought with the wrong intent. Nicer is if you left over the sacrifice after the time, the minimal time, minimum after the maximum time that it's a that you're allowed to eat it. You left it over, so the size of leaving over to be to be liable is is the size of a kazayas something. Uh, the uh, the uh, the laws of of uh, a person who eats a carbon who when he's tummy if a person is tummy he's not allowed to eat from the meat of a carbon and he is high of kares. Uh so that's also the law the, the amount that he eats is a kazayas if he's going to be in order to be liable uh, get hanasha the the sciatic nerve uh, nerve area of the in the, in the animal. Um, uh, so these are all the law of Kazayas. Okay, then we have the next. Oh. Okay, so then we have Dvash. Okay, so let me tell you where we, where we are over here. The law of Dvash is... The uh, the um, Mara on page six A, and it's the first word on the line. It's right in the middle of the page. It must be about uh, twelve lines from the top. No, maybe less. Uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven lines from the top. Uh, page six A. Okay, so the Gemara says Vash, the uh, the the verse said the Vash that honey is one of the other um, uh, one of the seven species that Eretz Yisrael is blessed with. So the Gemara says, what 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 does that refer to? Tikkaisevas Agasa that that refers to the um, the large date um, that one is re one is liable for eating on Yom Kippurim on Yom Kippur because that would be um, uh, something that would remove one's uh, inoi, one's pain, by eating that size of a peina, of a, of a, of a tamar, of a, of a date, that would, um, it's called the kaiseves, kaiseves hagasa, a large date, so that would be uh, a transgression of eating on Yom Kippur. In other words, the law of Yom Kippur is not a kazayas, it's a kaiseves, a little bigger than a kazayas. Um, and the reason the reason why that is is because it says um, a, a soul that is not pained 
So it's not about uh, it's not about the eating. It's about not being in pain. And when a person eats a koiseves, he is not in pain. I don't know if you remember, but we did have a toisvus that asked an interesting that mentioned a gemara that that spoke about an interesting case where someone is so large, like Oig Melech and he's big, like the King Oig, who was huge, a giant. When he eats a koiseves, is he going to be also not in pain anymore because he ate one big date that that's going to he's going to be satisfied the guy is it means nothing to him it's like for us to eat a sesame seed it's not going to change your hunger one bit uh so uh, you know uh, how would that help so it, it would seem like it would uh it would depend on the person the gemara answers no everyone is all is under the same category that you will be less in, you will have some uh, element of uh, of relief from your hunger. Just the person who's very small will have more relief from their hunger, um, less pain. A, per, uh, a, a person who's much larger, a giant, he will be relieved, but very, but minimally. But he'll still be have some type of relief, even as long as he has a koiseves, hagasa, a large. Anyway, so that's the uh, law of Dvash. That each of the seven species are a, a, a halacha that's applicable to them. So the Gemara was now concluded its question, the or it's it's at the it's in the midst of concluding its question, and let's read the next word Alma de Araiso Ninu. So we see that they are biblical, and it is not a halacha l'maishem Sinai the shiurim. So the Gemara before brought a statement that said shiurim. The measurements of the Torah are all halacha l'mayshim Sinai. They were a tradition given to Moses at Sinai, meaning it doesn't say it in the Torah, but rather it is something that Moses got a tradition about as almost like a uh, a verbal uh, tradition, an oral tradition that was not written. It was just transmitted to Moses at Sinai. And, um, and that's what the Gemara previously said. And the Gemara said, but that's not true because we do have a uh, a, a pasuk in the Torah that does give us the shiurim. So the Gemara says, "Vitizbara, do you really think this pasuk teaches you these measurements? Shiurim miksivi, does it really say the the measurements? What it it doesn't tell us what each one applies to. The Gemara explains what they apply to, but for example, the the the, the, the pasuk just tells us what Israel is blessed with. So it mentions the uh, date honey. Uh, okay, but what is? How do we know where to apply the law of date honey? So the, the, the Pasuk talks about these uh, measurements. Yeah, in, in, it's talking really about the, the items that Israel is blessed with. Okay, so it applies to measurements, but how do you know where to where to connect the dots? How do you know which uh, how to match which law with which uh, species? So the Gemara says, Do you think the Shurim, it says it in the Torah? It doesn't say what each thing is a shear is a measurement for. Really, these are halach al Ukra and the Pasuk is Asmachta the Yalmahu. The Pasuk is only something that the rabbis based their the uh, the uh, the law upon, meaning that they connected it to this uh, to this Pasuk, but really they are based on in other words, the rabbis sort of gave us a way to remember them and um, um uh, if, if you remember the pasuk, you could remember these uh, these different uh, shiura measurements. But really, it's it's based on uh, you can't learn them from the pasuk. It's based on uh, uh, the halacha uh, Sinai, a law tra- tra- tradition given to Moses at Sinai. So then the Gemara says chatzitin da The Gemara asks, but the chatzitin, uh, 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 the Gemara says chatzitin. <laughs> they are biblical. Uh, so that was another case that we said is Allah uh, that the chatzitza, chatzitza means a, 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 a separation between the body and the mikvah water. That a person, when they go to mikvah, they need to not have any chatzitza, anything separating. That's why uh, women, they always take off their nail polish and they, you know, they make sure their hair is combed. There shouldn't be any, any hairs that are, that are, uh, uh, fallen out that that aren't uh, 
that aren't attached to their body, that there would be a separation, even a here could be a separation, which we'll soon see about. But uh, so, uh, 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 you know, and other types of chatzitzas, other types of uh, things that uh, that might uh, any dirt, any dirt under the fingernails and dirt, uh, you know, on the, any dirt on the body could be a chatzitza. So even uh, even like a scab could be a chatzitza. And uh, so anyway, these are the things that would separate from a person going to the mikvah. Uh, so they would, uh, so so the Gemara said, so the, the Gemara initially said that chatzitza is one of the laws that's a halacha la Maisha misina. It's a law given to Maisha at Sinai, uh, to his transmitted to Maisha. So now we, we brought that statement really to talk about sukkah, that mechitza is halacha la Maisha misina. But the Gemara said too, uh, the, the, the same statement said mechitza, which means the law of sukkah wall is a halach l'mayshim Sinai. The Gemara, all the, that same statement said mechitza, and it said shiurim. So the Gemara now discussed shiurim. Now we're going to discuss chatzitza, and then we'll talk a little about the sukkah law that that the mechitza that mechitza is going to be a halach l'mayshim Sinai. Anyway, so now we're talking about chatzitza. The law of again, it's it's similar in words. Chatzitza and mechitza. It's chatzitza and mechitza. Two separate things. Chatzitza is the separation in going to the mikvah. Anything that interposes uh, between the body and the mikvah water. So chatzitza is the arisen, you know, the Gemara asks. We just said chatzitza is the halacha, l'mayshim Sinai is given to Moses at Sinai. What do you mean? It's a arisen, you know, it's in, right in the Torah, the chsiv, as it says in the Torah. Verachatz v'amayim, that the Pesach says that he will wash his flesh in water. It seems like there's a question of which pasuk they're actually bringing from, because you see in the parentheses over here, uh, there's a parentheses in the uh, in some gemaras, I guess, that has a little parentheses. Anyway, it says espes. Is it Barachat's espesore b'mayim? Is it that pasuk, or it's a different verse? But anyway, this the verse says he should wash his flesh in water. Now, why does it say besore b'mayim? So we, we have a drusha, we have a way of expounding this, that the, the flesh of the person's body has to touch the water. right? Nothing should interpose between the, um, between the uh, water, the body, and the water. The body should touch, the, the water should touch the entire body. So how do you just say, how did Rav say that the law of Chatzitza is a halach It's really... Uh, it's really written in the Torah because it has that we have this pasuk. So the Gemara says you're right. It does say a pasuk, but kiyasa hilchasa lasairoi. Where's the halacha l'mayshem misinai applicable? It applies to the law of seyar of the hair. That the uh, the law of the hair that the hair also has to touch the water. That you might think maybe the hair doesn't need. To touch the, uh, you know, the hair doesn't have to touch the water. The Gemara tells us, no, the hair has to touch the water. And if one hair is tied in a knot, the water won't touch part of the hair. That could be a problem. Like Rabbi said, you have one hair that's tied in a knot. It sets us, it ruins the mikvah dunk. It ruins it. It's chaitzetz, it's chaitzetz. It separates between the body and the water. One hair could be knotted. But if you have three, it's not a problem. Why is three not a problem? Because when you tie a knot around three with three hairs in it, the hairs are, are tight, are strong. And so the knot is not a strong knot. But if you tie one string by itself into a knot, that knot is a strong knot, and the water will not come into it, and there'll be area in the hair that doesn't have, uh, it doesn't have, um, uh, it doesn't have water uh, touching it. So the Gemara says, "Shdayim." However, two hairs, any yodeya. I don't know what the halacha would be. If two hairs are also very tight, I know, like like one here, I know one here is very. You tie one here to itself, that's very tight knot. 
to tie three years, it's uh, not to, to tie. I don't know two. Two might be similar to one or it might be similar to, to three. But whatever it is, two I'm not sure about. Now, what what comes out from this? What comes out is that the law of Tatsitsa, that's a Daraisa, is talking about the body. The law of Halach Lomashim Sinai would be that the here also is included in this law of not having a separation. The Gemara says, but that doesn't fit. The here is also biblical, as it says, the word S, S. That he washes the here in water, and the Gemara says that that means that the word S means something that's secondary to your nullified to your body. Oh my neo, what is that? Syroy that refers to the here. That means that the even the here needs to touch the water. So if so, the chatzitza, if it has a separation, if it has a uh, something that's inter. Uh, posing between the body and the uh, and and the water, so the hair also is included in that, and the, the, even the hair needs to be uh, touching the water, and that's a pasuk. So what are we using the halacha lemaishim Sinai for? What did what, what did Hashem have to give Moses a special uh, um, uh, a special uh, uh, teaching that halacha lemaishim Sinai gave him a special law that you know the hair has to be touching the uh, uh, touching the water. The here has to touch the water. That I know from a pasta. You know, I don't need Moshe, Hashem to tell Moshe orally some special law about the here has to touch, that the here has to touch the water. So the Gemara says, What is this halacha Moshe Sinai coming for? It's t- coming to tell me about Rabbi Yitzchak. I'm Rabbi Yitzchak. It's coming to tell me the special law of Rabbi Yitzchak. And what's the special law of Rabbi Yitzchak? Uh, the law is that the Vartaira, we turn the page to 6b, Vartaira Rubo Yamakbid Alam Khaitsis. That biblic that that not biblically. Uh, the halacha Lamaitra may sinai. The Vartaira here is used in a very loose way. And uh it's like a word that the, the, the Gemara uses the Dvar the Vartaira really it, it means to say halacha Lamaitra may sinai. So it just uses it loosely, it calls it a dvar dvar taira. But it means halacha lamaisha may sinai. There's a tradition. That given to Moses from Sinai, that Rubai, if the majority of the hair is dirty or is tied in knots, Umakbid Allah, and he is particular about it, so then it is Chaitzates, it interposes between the mikvah water and the body. And if he's not particular about it, then it's not a problem. So if the majority of his hair is knotted or dirty or so, and so on, if he's particular about it, it ruins the mikvah. If he's not particular about it, it's not a problem. But the Gazru, however, they made a decree. The rabbis made a decree. If the majority of the hair is dirty or has knots, the rabbis made a decree that what we're gonna we're gonna say it's not a good a kosher mitzvah dunk. Because you might make a mistake and, and think that the same law would apply if you are particular about it. So, because if you were particular about it, and the majority of you here is is uh, is knotted or is dirty, and if you were particular about it, that would biblically that that would that, that would be prohibited. So, even if you're not particular about it, the rabbi said that also will be a problem of a mikvah. 
of uh, not of, of, of that will also be a problem that it won't be a kosher mikvah done. Now the al chatz the al miyutai hamakbid mishum rubai hamakbid. Now what about if you have a minority of the peer that has a chatzitza has this separation? They made a decree there as well, just in case you have more than the minority, you have a majority. And the person, if the person is particular about it, so the, uh, they, they made a decree about miyuta hamakbid, a, a, a minority that he's particular about because of rubai hamakbid, because of the majority that he would be uh, particular about, and that would be invalid. So therefore, they also prohibited, the rabbis prohibited the miyutoi hamakbid. So what comes out is that this halacha lamaisha misinai tells us that even though the body needs to go in a mikvah, but keep in mind that the law only applies if you're particular about it and if it's majority of your here. Now Rashi leaves it vague what it would be if the body has the has these issues. In other words, what's the law regarding the body? And the commentaries all argue, and, and other people, other commentaries argue with Rashi, but the commentaries argue with what Rashi even means. Does does Rashi mean to exclude the rest of the body and that these laws only apply to the hair? Or does the laws, um, do, do all the, do the laws apply to the hair and the rest of the body? And Rashi maybe just gave an example of the hair, even the hair maybe, but uh, so anyway, the commentaries all argue in these areas about uh, uh, if it only applies to the hair or applies to the whole body or uh, in, in the, what Rashi specifically means. But in any event, uh, the, the simple way of learning Rashi is that this is, is the, the simple word of Rashi is that this, applies, this is definitely applicable to the hair. And uh, it could be that it applies as well to, uh, to the body, uh, according to Rashi. And according to other commentaries, for sure, it applies to the body. These same laws about majority that you're particular about and then the rabbis making a decree about things that you're not particular about but uh but you but you might come to be you might come to uh uh, uh trans you know you might come to make a mistake and therefore the rabbis were machmir were strict that you shouldn't have any katsitsa any separation and i i brought down i mentioned that according to the the, the ramon Shulchan Aruch, that talks about how we, we are machmir in general not to have, uh, you know, any type of chatzitza. Uh, okay. Anyway, so um, so that's the law. Oh, the Gemara asks a question here. Why don't we make a decree that if you have a chatzitza separation in your body, that you dirt or something on your body, that's on a minority, that you're not particular about, let's make a decree because it's similar to it's similar to a minority of dirt on your body or on your hair, I should say, that that you are particular about because rabbinically that's that's an invalid mikvah. Inami, or we should say that you should be uh, prohibited the mikvah should be invalid when it, uh, when you have a when you have dirt that's on the minority that you're not particular about because mishum rub because it might be because it's similar to a, a, a majority that you're not particular about and the gemara says that first the, the law itself is a decree you want to make an additional decree on that law? In other words, that law itself is not biblical. That's only a rabbinic law. So why should we go and make another another law prohibiting this case as well? So according to the Gemara, the miyuta she'enai makved is no problem at all. And um, the only issue would be uh, if it's a miyut hamakved or a rubai she'enai makved. That was the cases where the Gemara said would be uh, prohibited. Okay. Rabbi, yes. What if the what if the person's uh, what if the person is mockpied only because it might invalidate the mikveh? He's not mockpied because uh, he, because he's mockpied. He's only he's only particular because he, because of the fact that the, this might invalidate the mikveh. 
So I'm not sure that that's called Machbid because he's not because he's he's saying if it he, he's only particular about it if it's going to invalidate it. If it's not going to invalidate it, then he's not particular about it. Right. It sounds like sounds like it's, he's basing it on whatever the title like he's not really particular about it because if the Torah says it's kosher or the Halakha Lomaisha Messina says it's kosher, then it's kosher. This is what it sounds like. It right. seem, that's what it would seem like. Okay. So is that a valid, so is that a valid uh, argument? Well, or is that a valid, like valid point? The, the, So, so I don't think it's a problem. I, again, I'm not. I'm not looking up the Shulchan Aruch, but I'm. I'm. I, I, my my initial thought would be that he is, he's not really particular. He's basing. He's only, you know, he's sort of like saying, if if this is a problem, I'm particular about it. Or uh, I don't know. I'm not really sure. It's an interesting question, actually. I think I think it's a good question. Um, I'm having second thoughts now. <laughs> um, maybe 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 it is a problem. Uh, I guess I I, I I guess I have to look it up if you know. Um, but in any event, I mentioned that there's a Ramah that says that um, the lechatchila, um, preferably, you shouldn't have anything separating because of a gzeira of the you know the, something that might separate. In other words, it's uh, it, 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 it it's very discouraged. To rely on to rely on this. Mm-hmm. We, uh, we, uh, we try to be careful. Okay. So the Gemara continues and says that um, the Gemara continues and says that Mechitzin are Mechitzin is a uh, so what does that refer to? Says, is what we said before that it's referring to the sukkah that this is the source that a sukkah can only be 10 hand breaths. And um, the, uh, the Gemara says Yehuda, this goes good according to Rabbi Yehuda El Reb Meir, Michael Meimer. this is good according to Rabbi Yehuda that um, that that uh, we need a halacha l'mayshu misinai because otherwise we had a problem. The problem was that uh, Reb Meir, the Reb Yehuda, one second, this, this goes good according to Reb Yehuda, right, because we had a problem in Reb Yehuda's opinion. What was the problem in Reb Yehuda's opinion? Reb Yehuda held that, uh, that some Amas in the, in the, uh, in the Beis Hamikdash and in the Mishkan were only five hand breaths. So it messed up our whole calculation because basically we, what we wanted to say was that the uh, wings on top of the cherubs were on top of a hollow area, an, an, an unused area um, that had 10 hand breaths, solid 10 hand breaths. That's what we wanted. That's what we were explaining. The problem we had with that was that Rabbi Yehuda holds that the ark, together with the piece, the board on top of the ark, was only seven and a half hand breaths. And the area that's hollow was 11 and a half hand breaths. So if you have eight and a half hand breaths plus 11 and a half hand breaths, it ended up, um, it ended up that the, the, um, the roof, which is the, the wings of the cherubs, they were covering an area of, that was empty of 11 and a half hand breaths. And we wanted to prove that schach is 10 hand breaths, not 11 and a half. So we had a problem. According to Reb Meir, there was no problem because according to Reb Meir, that's exactly how much it was covering. The, the wings of the, of the cherubs were covering exactly 10. So that was exactly the word schach fits perfectly. With, in other words, we have a source that schach is on top of 10 hand breaths. But with regard to Reb, Reb Yehuda, we had a problem because it would basically mean that a sukkah needs to be 11 and a half hand breaths. And the rabbis know that that's not the that's not true. 
So we need another source. So we said that it's a halach l'mesh misinai. So the Gemara says, oh, it's a halach l'mesh misinai. Yeah, great. That's Reb Yehuda. Now what, now what do we do with Reb Meir? If this is a halach l'mesh misinai, we got to figure out what Reb Meir is using it for because we, we, Reb Meir doesn't need a halach. Why would Hashem go and tell Moshe this special law if it's not needed because he said it in the Torah already? In other words, it was we see it in the Torah. We understand it from the Torah already. So then it's not going to be a halach l'mesh misinai about it. Are things that it doesn't say clearly in the Torah, or it's a heter, a leniency that even though the Torah implies something, this is going to change something from the Torah. But if the Torah says it, then we're not going to have a halach l'meishemisinai for it. So the Gemara says, "You're right. What is the halach l'meishemisinai going to do for Reb Meir? Ella le Reb Meir, Michael le Meir. What are we going to do according to Reb Meir?" The Gemara says, "Kiyasi hilchoso. What is the halach l'meishemisinai coming for? It's le good. It's going to tell us the law." Of good, beloved, in the law of love, in the law of a doifen akuma, in the law of doifen akuma. Now, what is good? Good is, um, it, it, it is, is like good, 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 good asik, which is something that we had before. Good asik was the a uh, law that uh, if you have a Florida sukkah where you only have a wall on half or quarter of your of your sukkah so as long as it's 10 hand breaths it could be extended to um we can extend it all the way up to the roof so that's the law of good and then we have the law of um that's one of the laws of good there's other laws of good as well which we're going to come to we're going to learn about we also have the law of um, love which is less than three hand breaths which is something we learned about as well, that there's something that's within three hand breaths that can be joined together. One of the cases that we had was if the sukkah is too small, it's too short, excuse me, if the sukkah is too short and you dug a hole inside your sukkah, so now you have altogether 10 hand breaths. The problem is the hole is not near the walls. So can we join the wall of the hole to the wall of the sukkah? And the case, the case was if it's within the law was if it's within three hand breaths, love it, then you could join the two walls. You have an upper wall, that's your sukkah wall, but that's not 10 hand breaths. But you have your hole in the ground that adds to the sukkah wall and can make it 10 hand breaths. That was the law of love. That was one of the cases that we used for love it. And then we have doifed akuma, which is another law that we learned that you could have up to four amois, uh, four cubits that are. Um, it's, it's a weight, the, the, the kosher schach is away from the sukkah up to four, uh, it's, it's four cubits away from the sukkah. Um, we can, we can, we can call the non-kosher schach, doifen akuma, the, 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 the bent wall, and just have the, uh, the schach that's, uh, that's kosher, that area would be, uh, would be a kosher stock and the other area would just would be a non-kosher would be non-kosher stock and that was the uh, the law of doifen akuma and uh, it could be considered like a wall instead of non-kosher stock up to four amis up to four cubits now what we're seeing here and this is something interesting that you see around the the, the, the in the in the talmud that generally whenever we have a halacha lamaisha misinai a law that's a tradition is it coming to tell us a new prohibition? What is the normally the halakha l'mayshem misinai coming to teach us? So generally, it's coming to teach us a leniency. It's teaching us a, 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 a that even though in the Torah I said this, but it doesn't have to be exact. It could be even this works. This is the halakha l'mayshem misinai. So it's a general. Generally, that's what Halakha Lomesh Messina is coming to teach us. For example, you would think that a sukkah needs to have four walls. Halakha Lomesh Messina comes and tells you that it's um, two and a half walls. You know, so it's coming to 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 to, to give a leniency. You would think that uh, uh, you know that that the whole body needs to go in the mikvah and has to touch it. The halacha l'mayshu misinai tells you that majority that your mock is not the problem, but if it's less than that, 
or if it's you're not particular about it, it's no problem. So we're seeing here that halacha l'mayshim yisina comes to give a leniency to the laws of the Torah. This is something interesting. Not everyone, most people don't realize this, but uh, that's generally what a halacha l'mayshim yisina does. Uh, now we're going to jump to the next, we're going to continue with the next piece of Gemara, which is a new part of the Mishnah. The Mishnah said, that a, that a sukkah needs to have three hand breaths. Rabbi. Yes, three walls. Excuse me. Yeah, yes, uh, w. Is uh, can that be, is that something that can be revealed as after the time of the Gemara? I don't. I don't think so. I mean, whatever. If it wasn't in a halacha l'mayshim Sinai in the Gemara, then I, 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 it would seem surprising that the rabbis would come up with it later. You know what I mean? Like the like the gonim or you know the, the later. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it, the the only scenario would be if they cannot find any source for a certain law. They might say, well, it must have been Halakha Lamesha Misina, you know, but it's very rare. You, you, you Normally, they would try to find the source. In other words, we have uh, the, the halachas that we know of, and if we can't find the source, then maybe maybe it was the Halakha Lamesha Misina, you know, but it's very rare, such an idea, such a concept. Uh, generally, they search and search and try to compare things and compare laws to figure out what the source of, uh, of any law is. If it was a Halakha Lamesha Misina, you would expect it to be in the uh, in the Gemara. Okay, because I was just, I was thinking about excuse me um, this thing that I heard about the the uh, with Chol of Yisrael. So the, the, I mentioned this before that uh, they said that uh, the Baal Shem Tov said that Chol of Yisrael was a halacha of Moshe of Sinai. So based on what you're saying, that sounds doubtful. Wait, say that again. That the Baal Shem Tov said that Chol of Yisrael is a halacha of Moshe of Sinai. Mm-hmm. I, so based, yeah. So based on what you're saying, that doesn't sound accurate. Yeah. It's 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 not a it's not for the, to be mako. It's to be a chumra. It's you know it's to be uh, you know, and the second thing is it's a later generation. It's from the time. Where yeah, after. yeah. That sounds a little surprising to, to say that, especially because the rabbis we 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 have clear uh, sources that the rabbis established it. He it's might have just said, he might have meant that it's a halakha l'mesh of Sinai, that it's uh, it's so important, you know what I mean? If this is a halakha l'mesh of Sinai, we don't, we're, not, we're not lenient on it or something like that, you know? Right. Maybe he meant it more in a, not not not, not really a halakha l'mesh of Sinai, but it's similar to it. Maybe that's what he meant. Ah, uh, okay. There is an interesting question over here. We we said that Halakha Lamaisha Messinai is teaches the law of good, lovud, and daifin akuma. We really should have added Halakha Lamaisha Messinai is the law that two and a half walls are good enough. Right? Why didn't we mention that? So well, you're using one of the three. To make two and a half walls good enough. To make two and a half walls good enough is Allah Hamesh Messinai. But that's because you're using good asik or the other things to fill it out. What are you using when you have two walls and a third wall that's only a tefa? What are we using to what what is the source that that's acceptable? What what mean what mechanism of, of halacha of uh, I, are we using? Right. So, so seemingly it's halacha. I mean, we, we know it's halacha mesh We're going to soon, soon we're going to soon uh, uh, see it that that way. The Gemara is going to discuss it. Anyway, the Gemara is going to going to going to have sources how many walls you need in the Torah. But we know that even a tefach is good enough, right? So if a tefach is good enough for a wall, what's the source for that? So. One of the commentaries wants to say that the, the, it, it's included in the in the law of good. Good means to draw, to extend it. That even a tefach can be extended to make it a, call, a full wall. So, in other words, when we say that the Allah Hamishim Sinai implies it includes good, 
It also is talking about the law of the third wall being even a hand breath, that that's considered a full wall. That's also part of the law of good. Now, my question is, why didn't Rashi say that? Rashi didn't mention didn't mention the the the, the third the third. You know, it does seem a little surprising that doesn't uh, that Rashi doesn't say it when we say good. He should have said good includes that the third wall can even be a tefach a hand breath, and we extend it to be considered a um, uh, to be considered a full wall. You know, seemingly, Rashi should have mentioned that, but. Um, The, there's another opinion that says it's included in the law of lovers. Because you have to put that third wall within three hand breaths of the other wall to make it lovered. So it's really part of lovered. That, that really falls in under the category of lovered, that less than three hand breaths. Maybe that fits a little better because it's uh, the Rashi doesn't really tell us what love it is. He just says less than three. So maybe it's really included in the law of love. It. The only thing is, the law of love it gives us a allows us to call this a third wall, but it's it's really only four hand breaths, which is majority, it, it, you know, majority of a wall. Who says that that's good enough to make to be considered a full wall? In other words, we, we, it's still leaving out. It's, it says love it. <laughs> Love it is part of it. He's using that mechanism of love it to, to consider this a kosher wall, but seemingly you need an additional law that through by and uh, you know that 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 that, that that's uh, good enough for the third wall. You could rely on the majority. Anyway, this is a this is a discussion in the commentaries about trying to figure this out how how to uh, come up with this. Um, Okay. Anyway, so that's uh, that's the, the the next part. So we we we're, we're a sukkah that doesn't have three uh, three walls. Tanu Rabban and the rabbis taught in a brisa, dayim til chosan two walls that are as halachically uh, you know mentioned according to halacha, which is the seven hand breaths by seven hand breaths at least minimum, and um, they're next to each other like an L shape. Slisha slisha is and the third one can even be a uh, hand breath, and that would be good enough uh, for the third wall. Reb Shimon, Reb Shimon says, you need three solid proper walls, three proper walls, seven by seven, uh, seven by seven area. The Revias, Afilo Tevach, and the fourth one could even be a, a hand breath. Now, the Gemara is going to try to explain what the source is. Let's try to go through this. Remember that we had the word sukkahs. It says in the Torah sukkahs three times. Two of the times it says it without any vavs. No oh, vav, sure. no plural. And one time it says about sukkahs with one vav at the end, making it plural. So it's about sukkahs teishu. Um... Um, there's another pasuk that says ki basukais. Oh, I'm sorry. It's called Ezra Yisrael Yeshu Basukais. Everyone who who is a resident among the Yidden dwells in a sukkah. Basukais Yeshu Basukais. They dwell in sukkahs and also no vavs. And then finally, it says, "Laman yedu derisechem ki basukais," in order that the generations should know that I I uh, I, uh, I place you in sukais with above. Here it has above. So there's three words, three times says sukais, and only one of them has this has one vav at the end of the word, making it plural. So the Gemara says, "By commitment." So what are these rabbis arguing about? Totally brilliant. Now I should I should just mention. Let me just. Let this me is more it. the style of Rabbi Akiva. Post, I, I post. put a mute everyone, and if uh, um, Jeffrey, if you want to ask something, I'm just muting everyone and just unmute yourself in a second, okay? Um, let me first mute everyone. 
Okay. Yes, Jeffrey. Just unmute yourself and, and you can ask. Jeffrey? Just hold on. It's, it's mechanisms that don't allow you to do this. <laughs> Yes, uh -huh. you, your quotations are all correct. They're, they're all from one paragraph in the end of MR. Not the okay. end of MR, middle of MR. Okay. The part, Amazing. Part of, of, but at the end, Sukkah is mentioned before that in the sense that Chag HaSukos is mentioned, I believe, before that. But this is all three, three sentences together at the end of the section about the Yom Tov. Okay, very good. Um, thank you, thank you, Jeffrey. It's always good to know I didn't make a mistake. Um, so but for my commitment, so the Gemara asks, what what do we argue? What are they arguing about? So again, we have the first opinion of this Abraisa that says what we normally uh, know automatically that three walls is all you need, and even three is not exactly really two and a half. Two and a tefach, and Reb Shimon's opinion, which we're not familiar with, is three in a in a um, and a tefach, three and a. So, so basically, uh, what are they arguing about? So the rabbis hold that yeth aim lemasodes that the main thing is the way it's written, and the way it's written comes out comes out with uh, the, that that says it four times because three times is written, and the fourth one is understood. From the plural vav, Reb Shimon says, Reb Shimon says, "Yechem lemikra." We've got to look at the way it is pronounced. And the way it's pronounced, all three of them are plural because we pronounce them sukois, not sukas, but sukois. So because of the way it's pronounced, the way it's read, so that is yechem lemikra. We give emphasis on the way it is it is uh, pronounced. So Rabbanan Tzavi Yechem lemikra. Rabbis hold you go by the way it's written, the tradition, the way it's written. Basukois, basukois, basukois. You see, it's with the way it's written is the uh, no, no vubs in the first two, and then the final one has a plural, and um, it comes out that that's like uh, four times. Here we can arba arba. You have four. Dal chad gufei. So you need one because it has to tell us to. <laughs> you have to dwell in the sukkah. It's We have to dwell in a sukkah. So one we need for the itself for the fact that you have to dwell in a sukkah, and so 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 um, so now we only have three left. Pashtulu so you have three. So. What do we what so what do we see from this? So Sayyim Til Khasan. You need two that are proper walls. The Asi Hilkasa in the Halakha Lamashim Sinai comes and tells us that that the third one of Grasa Lishlish is Vaikma Tepa, that it minimizes the third wall. And it establishes it with a tefa, meaning that what is the halacha l'mayshe misinai come to do? It comes to be lenient. You need three walls. We have in the Torah. It says it four times. Four times. One to, to tell us the law itself that you need to dwell in a sukkah. And the yeshiva of a sukkah, you need to know you have to dwell in the sukkah. And uh, then the other three, why does it say it? It's coming to teach you you need three walls. So the Torah tells us three walls. What does the Halakha Lomashim Sinai come to do? It comes to give us a leniency. That you know what? The third wall doesn't have to be a full wall. It could be one tefach, and that's good enough. It's kosher for a sukkah. Um, Reb Shimon Sabar, but Reb Shimon says, Yeshem Lomikra. We give emphasis into the way things are pronounced. According to that, it's basukais, 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 all with vavs, meaning we pronounce it as if it has a plural sukais with a vav. That's the way it's pronounced. Now, if it's pronounced with a vav, that means each one we're going to call them two because they're all plural. So two plus two plus two equals six. Harikan sheis, you have six. Dal chad you have one pasuk to tell you that you need to dwell on a sukkah. So now we have five extras. I'm sorry, you don't have five extras. You have four extras. Because one of the words needs to be used for sukkah. In other words, we need it to say that you need to dwell in a, in a, in, in a sukkah so one word is used uh, for one word sukkah is used, and it teaches you that uh, you need the, the mitzvah of sukkah needs to be uh, you need to dwell in a sukkah. 
So Pashulu Arban, so now you don't have any words left except four, except two two sukhoises, which equals four. So Shalishla Kilfasan, you have three that are proper walls. Asi Hilchasa, and normally you should need four because this four times that it says sukhais, in other words, two words plural equals four. And so really you should need four walls. But a griyas al reviyas, the halacha l'mayshem isinai comes and minimizes the fourth wall. Vayit b'sateva that establishes it that it's good enough on just to have a handrail. So that's one way of understanding the argument. Vayizim, if you want to say, if you want, you could say a little differently that the explanation of this argument is really alma yeshem l'mikra. Everyone agrees that we follow the way it is pronounced. Vahalcha b'akamuf again. Here we're arguing about a certain law. One opinion is that you need the schach. You need a pasuk to teach you the schach. And uh, therefore, if you use one pasuk to teach you the schach, um, all you'll have left is you have four. In other words, if everyone holds the way we've, it's pronounced is the is the uh, is the main thing. So you end, ends up you have four. You have a teaching of four. The thing is, if you need one for the schach, then you'll you'll learn that you need three, three walls, because one is used for schach, three is used for the walls, and then the halakha mishmasina will come and say two and a half is good enough. So that would be the rabbis. Umar Sabha Reb Shimon would hold, you don't need a verse for the schach, you don't need to learn it from the word sukkah, because um, when it says the sukkah, we understand you need schach. So talking about the sukkah. So therefore, if it says dwell in a sukkah, we know schach. So you don't need a law about the schach. All you need is about the walls. And that's, according to that, you have four walls. It says sukkah is twice, which is plural. Each one is plural. It's four. So you need you need four walls. Comes Allah HaMashim and says, no, you need three walls and one a tefach. And that would be Rav Shimon's view. We don't follow that, but that, that would be Rav Shimon's view. If you want, you could say another way of explaining this argument. Everyone agrees that the Iker, the main thing is the Mesoidus, the way the tradition, the way it's written, which according to that, you have a way, you can darshan, you can expound on three words sukkahs. So it's three sukkahs, three sukkahs. Because uh, one of them is used for itself. And so you have um, a, the tradition according to the way it's uh, it's written. So you have four altogether. One we need for itself. So now you have three. One says that it says you need three walls. And if it says you need three walls, so then uh, the Halakha Meshavisina comes and says, no, you don't need three walls. You need two and a half. Mar Savar, but Rav Shimon says, no, Halakha Meshavisina comes to add Lahaisif. Yes, the Ilkhasa Lahaisif, Halakha Meshavisina would come to add a wall and say, that it's not enough to have three, you really need a fourth wall. The Torah says you need three. Allah Sinai comes and says, no, you need four. So this would be one example of an exclusion to the rule that I said earlier, that generally Allah Sinai comes to be lenient. According to Reb Shimon, if he learns this way, it comes out that the Allah Sinai is coming to add. Because according to the Torah, if he learns Yeshem Lemesidus, that the main thing is the way it's written. So he only has three words, sukkais, to darshan. He expounds on three words, sukkais, which would mean you need three walls. And comes Reb Shimon and says, no, Halach Lomashim comes and says, I need a fourth wall. So the Halach Lomashim is coming to be machmer. This is an exclusion to the general general thing we find that Halach Lomashim is often coming to be lenient. Okay, now comes the final uh, explanation here. That be by him if you want, you could say that Halacha Meshavisina comes to minimize. Everyone agrees with that, and the Eishem Lemasaitis, and the main thing is the way it is written, the tradition, the way it's written, and Rahacha the Darshan Chilos Kamefagi. And here they're arguing if. You can learn from the first word. In other words, that we're using to teach the law of sukkah. Can you learn also about a wall? Mars of our master holds, meaning Rib Shimon, he holds Darshan's Chilas. They could also learn from the first one. And um, uh, so therefore, you would learn that... Um, 
that you need four walls because Yeshem Lamaser is the way it's written. It's written four times, and it says three times, and one of them is plural, that's four. So, and we're learning from one of them that you need to dwell in a sukkah, to reside in a sukkah, but you could also learn that to teach you a wall. So, you know, you need four walls. Now, what does Halakha Lamashim Basina come to tell us? That three walls and a half is good enough, according to Rib Shimon. Three walls and a tepa. Who my sovereign master, meaning the the other opinion, the rabbis, they hold ain't darshan chilos. You can't darshan, you can't expound on the first one because we need it for itself to tell you that you need to you need to reside in a sukkah, and therefore you only have three words sukkahs left. And the halacha mishavasina comes and tells you that the four, the third the third one doesn't have to be a full wall. It is good enough to be even a hand breath. And we're going to stop here by Rav Masna and uh, have a wonderful day, everyone. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi. Uh, bye. Bye. Bye.